Hi friends, I am Nidin Paul. Today we are discussing about the effect of impurity on CST of phenol water system. And we know that phenol water system is a partially miscible binary liquid mixture. And if you are adding an impurity to a binary mixture, it will become a third component and the system will be ter ternary system. And we can consider the addition of impurity to the system. And suppose this is actually a phenol layer and here it is the water layer. If we are taking phenol and water together, we know that they are partially miscible. That means some water molecule will go to phenol and some phenol molecule will go to water layer. So, water layer will be saturated with phenol and phenol layer will be saturated with water at that particular temperature and pressure. This is called conjugate solutions. And for the conjugate solution of phenol water system, we will get miscibility temperature curves and this is actually CST value for that particular combination. It is 68.5. Now, suppose we can consider the addition of one impurity material. For example, we are adding KCl as an impurity to the system. So, KCl is an ionic compound and that will be soluble only in water. Or KCl will be K plus and Cl minus ion will be stabilized in water due to solvation. And this water layer will be solvated or due to solvation this water will be, layer will be more stabilized. That means the entry of water molecules from the stabilized water layer to phenol layer will be reduced. So what will happen is that if we want to dissolve these two or in order to get the miscibility temperature of these two mixtures. Here it is phenol in water mixture and it is water phenol mixture. Phenol in water and water in phenol. To conjugate solutions, in order to get a uniform solution, we should increase the temperature. So, when we are increasing the temperature, more phenol will enter into water layer and more water will enter into phenol layer and a uniform concentration. And their solution will be of uniform concentration will reach and the boundary will disappear. But if the entry of water molecule is restricted from water to phenol because of the stabilization of water layer, what will happen is that we should use more temperature. We should increase the temperature in order to get in or, or in order to make more water molecules to enter into phenol layer. That means in order to dissolve these two layers or in order to get the miscibility temperature, we should use more temperature for this system. That means if an impurity which is soluble in one of the components, the CST value, the miscibility value and correspondingly the CST value will increase and we will get a CST curve which is or miscibility curve which is above the normal miscibility curve and now we can consider the introduction of another impurity which is naphthalene or camphor to the system and we know that naphthalene which is highly which is soluble in phenol only and it is as it is a hydrocarbon it will repel water molecules and normally phenol is having a benzene ring which will repel water molecule and a hydroxy group which will attract water molecule. So, somewhat the effect is partial miscibility and if you are introducing naphthalene which is a water repelling compound, what will happen is that the entry of water molecule to this phenol layer will be will be restricted or will be forbidden by this naphthalene present in this phenol layer. So, if we want to introduce more water molecules to this phenol layer in the presence of naphthalene, 
we should increase the temperature we should use more temperature to make this more water entering means then only it will dissolve so in order to dissolve these two or in order to disappear the boundary between these two layers these two conjugate systems we should use more temperature so then also soluble in one one of the component the same result will appear a higher cst curve now we can consider a substance succinic acid which is soluble in both the components so what will happen succinic acid which is soluble in both the components usually if a liquid layer is separated from another liquid layer a surface will form there and a surface tension will appear in that layer and if a component which is soluble in both the separated layers if a component which will which is separated in which is soluble in both of the components what will happen is that it will reduce the surface tension between this this layer these two layers and another aspect is succinic acid which will move from water layer dissolved succinic acid in water will move to phenol layer and the dissolved succinic acid in phenol layer will move to water layer when succinic acid when moving from water layer to phenol layer it will also move along with it with its solvated or surrounded water molecule to phenol layer and if succinic acid from phenol layer is moving to water layer what will happen is that it is having phenol attached to that one that phenol also will be introduced into water very easily that means here the solubility or the entry of water to phenol and phenol to water is happening more easily in the presence of succinic acid that means in order to attain the solubility of these two layers we should use less temperature otherwise we can have a curve like this in which the miscibility temperature values will be somewhat lower than the normal value so solubility in both of the components if the impurity is soluble in both of the components the cst value will decrease otherwise the cst value will increase now we can consider the experiment in which we are determining the concentration of kcl which is actually an impurity system but here we want to determine the concentration of unknown kcl solution so that we will be provided with 1% kcl solution along with the unknown then pure phenol or 90% phenol with us for this determination pure phenol is not necessary 90% phenol is as is sufficient so we are provided with one boiling tube thermometer stirrer and a cork then a water bath is all ready with us so what we should do is the cork is already there thermometer is there so first of all we should introduce 5 ml of phenol to this system then from the given 1 percentage kcl solution we should prepare different kcl solutions of non concentration in a beaker or a standard flask so from the one of the non concentration of kcl we will take 5 ml and transfer to the solution so totally 5 ml phenol plus 5 ml 2% point 2 percentage kcl solution here so totally 10 ml solution is here now we know that a non concentration of kcl solution that means the solution is prepared in water so it is a system of water phenol plus kcl even though it is impurity that why that one's concentration is not for us or the amount of kcl in that one is not for us now if you are increasing the temperature what will happen is that phenol will go to water and water will go to phenol even though entry of water from water to phenol layer is restricted by kcl because of its solvation and stabilization so water may be it will dissolve the phenol 
water system, the boundary will disappear at a particular temperature. If we are increasing the temperature, that is called miscibility temperature. So first of all, we are heating that one. So while stirring that one, we can see that at a particular temperature, the turbidity inside this one, because of phenol and water, they are partially miscible. If you are stirring that one, a turbid solution will appear. But at a particular temperature, the turbidity will disappear. And that turbidity disappearing value is noted here. Then, now we are removing the burner and allowing the solution to cool down. And while stirring that one, we can see that the clear solution will become turbid. That is because of the appearance of second layer. So it become from homogeneous to it become two different layers or conjugate solution will start to appear and that is called the appearance of turbidity. So we will get the average of this one. Then next one we should remove this boiling tube. We should take another clean boiling tube and to the newly introduced boiling tube we should add phenol 5 ml. Then the another non concentration of KCl which is taken 5 ml. So totally 10 ml solution and here it is a different concentration or non concentration of KCl. So now it is 5 ml 0.4 KCl solution and 5 ml phenol. And here also we will determine the miscibility temperature. So we will get a value here and now burner is removed and solution is cooling down at that time the homogeneous mixture which was dissolving at this temperature homogeneous mixture will start to form two conjugate systems at that time the turbidity will appear so this is actually a reappearance of turbidity average is determined similarly for different concentration of non-KCL concentrations we will determine the miscibility temperature and finally we will take the unknown solution given to us that also we will introduce 5 ml to this to another boiling tube with 5 ml phenol 5 ml phenol taken in another boiling tube then 5 ml of this unknown solution is transferred the miscibility of that one is determined and now we can plot a graph so we can have percentage of KCL solution and miscibility values there. So we should plot a graph. Now we can plot a graph here. So that percentage of KCL is given here and temperature value for the turbidity value is given here. So we will get different points here and we will plot a graph here which will pass through maximum points which will pass through maximum point it will be a straight line it should be a straight line and suppose we are getting a turbidity value for the unknown we are getting a miscibility temperature here so the temperature is known for us from the miscibility temperature we can plot it like this and the corresponding concentration is determined this is actually the percentage of KCL in this unknown solution and what is actually the use of this impurity that is CST is a highly sensitive value and if you are adding impurities either it may go to higher value or to lower value that means CST value will change. So what will be the use of this experiment or practical application of this experiment? It is having so many practical applications here. For example, if you want to mix or if you want to prepare Lysol, which is actually a mixture of Cresol plus water. Cresol plus water is a cleaning liquid. So normally its CST value will be higher. Its CST value will be higher which is above room temperature. That means CST is high means it will not be soluble. It will appear as two different layers even though they are par 
partially soluble it will appear as two different layers cross solute plus water so if you are introducing an impurity which is soluble in both for example small amount of soap if you are adding that one what will happen is that the cst value will decrease so suppose if this is the room temperature what is happening we are getting a solution which is soluble below room temperature so cross solute and water will become soluble below room temperature so it will become a uniform solution and become useful for us then another one is as blending that is actually addition of impurity materials to make drug molecules soluble in water so in order to prepare syrupy materials and tonics usually we will add some some blending agents to make the medicinal compound which will be mostly organic to be dissolved in water below room temperature otherwise it will appear as two different layers that may not be useful then another application is the increase of shelf life usually coagulating process will happen in colloidal mixtures so usually we will keep substances in colloidal form and coagulation may happen and if you are using colloidal materials so what we should do is we should introduce some impurity materials that is soluble in both if you are in, in, introducing that one then we can see that the shelf life of materials will increase it is similar to the blending process then another one is application to phenol water system so the cst value of phenol water is almost 68.5 so if we want to reduce that cst value usually we should add some components which is soluble in both this so then only we can use phenol water system or emulsions of phenols to for preparation of polymer materials and polyurethanes and bakelite for this preparation some phenol emulsions are used and another one is application in paint industry then preparation of antiseptic materials cosmetic materials hair coloring materials in all these cases phenols are used but usually in all these situations phenol are used as a mixture with water or solution with water but in order to make the solution stable we should or in order to make it stable at a room temperature or below room temperature it should be stable so that means we should reduce the cst value to a lower value and or below room temperature if it is keeping at this temperature we can't use phenol water because it will become two different layers so we want to get it a uniform homogeneous mixture so we should introduce some impurity materials which is soluble in both so that the cst value will decrease and even at a room temperature it will appear as a uniform solution